So let's record this just because I know this will be the first yeah. that I channel Sanaya, eyes open. What, what makes it different? What's happening is I'm able to hold the focus. It's the same as I've always been channeling. But yeah, I've, I'm getting rid of the BS that I have to somehow close my eyes and disappear. And, and I that you're not one of them. Well, I know that I am one of them and I always have been. But it's not Suzanne who's one of them. And right now they're already saying, let us explain it. Okay. So okay. I, I do want to, whew, I do want to just share. It's been wondrous. I want to use the word magical because I set the intention several days ago that I would like to share in that way, eyes open, let Sanaya speak to, to people in an audience when I'm doing workshops or retreats. Uh, I'd like to them to interact personally with clients in sessions. It's awkward when I have to act as the intermediary. And so once I set that intention, I asked them to teach me in the middle of the night and they came through at three in the morning and held me in that state for an hour and a half, demonstrating what it would feel like to channel and showing me how to get to that state and hold it, which is not that different. And they said, we'll explain it to you. Uh, and then, so that was only three days ago, but for the last two days in meditation, they've had me speak out loud, eyes open, just channeling the teaching aloud. I didn't capture it. And I didn't, they're saying right now, I didn't need to capture it because it's part of the awareness. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. And the teaching is amazing. I don't, <laughs> it's just like, I don't know where to go with this. So let's just do it. Okay. Okay. So we're going to bring, we're, we're going to shift to uh, Sanaya talking and just see what they have to say and where it goes. Okay. Okay. So you may interact with them as you desire. <laughs> so this is the very first time that all I need to do is get out of the way. So with that, knowing they are always present and I've trained myself for years to access them at will, I'd like to welcome in Sanaya, okay? So. Ah, yes. And we have told Suzanne to wait until we give her the lip twitch, for that is the indication that we have blended with her. And she was a bit afraid in her human self to look at you even on the screen, thinking that she would have to look away, for that is the old BS. And we will be using that term quite often now as we speak to you through Suzanne's voice, but the Suzanne that you know, of course, is still here as a story, but as we have been showing her lately, she is the restricted flow of the one, the one life force, as are you. You, the one known as Beverly, you, the one known as Lynette, and you, the one who is watching this initial experience of the one known as Suzanne, surrendering that restricted flow of the one, so much so that she, can now set the story aside and merge with the one known as Sanaya, who she has always been. For what does that mean? Sanaya means one worth knowing, which is all of you. But we will speak to you as a collective for yes, at a higher level, we are higher beings. However, when we come together in this way to teach, to share, to transmit the higher energy of spirit, we are speaking as the one life force. Perhaps you can feel it. This one in the body of Suzanne did just feel the goosebumps that came from the one known as Lynette. 
for there is an energetic connection where two or more are gathered and the life force connects you. And this is felt physically. We will step aside now from speaking as the one and the one as Suzanne, the one as Lynette, as Beverly, etc. We only use this verbiage, this wording, so that you would understand that each one of you, all of you watching this video, are the one with a capital O experiencing life through a physical body. But now we speak to you as we, for we are a plurality of ones, the many coming together as one voice, as Sanaya. And this morning in the meditation, we would like to share the lesson that we gave to Suzanne, for she looked up at the wall for the first time with eyes open in meditation and noticed that a painting on the wall, which we would like to tell you Suzanne in a body can see now, but she has trained herself to have this divided awareness of Suzanne seeing a painting, but maintaining the awareness of Sanaya speaking and sharing a lesson. All can have this divided consciousness, most especially when you cross the veil, like your friend Brenda can visit multiple people at once and be aware of different experiences at once. It is not that her body has split into three. You would laugh at that. You have no body across the veil. You are pure consciousness, but this is part of the lesson this morning. All of you are pure, pure consciousness, and you can maintain consciousness in a restricted way within the body and notice paintings on the wall while still existing in the higher realms as one worth knowing. And yes, again, you are sending the goosebumps and we appreciate that. Back to the lesson at hand. Suzanne noticed the painting and it was crooked and she felt within herself an urge to get up and straighten it. And this was interrupting our connection. And we told her, notice how this desire is pulling you down. What you need to do, all of you, is learn to get beyond this idea of perfection. Perhaps you, like Suzanne, were able, were not able to draw outside the lines as a child. When you colored, you were taught you have to stay inside the lines, for that is the way it is done. And this teaching came from those you respected. We showed Suzanne this morning you see, this is much easier now for her, for she can now scratch the face and take care of bodily challenges whilst we continue talking. It is much easier for all of us. And your en energy adding to this allows us to hold the connection at the higher level. Back to our lesson. Those of you drawn by imperfection who must change it, are living with the false thought that you must change something in the external world to gain a reward. In the case of Suzanne, notice that in the past we could not even say her name. It would draw her back to the ego. This is the upward trajectory of all of you to leave the story behind and be able to hold on to higher consciousness. But Suzanne was raised with most especially the mother, but both parents whose love was a bit on the conditional side, not so much with the father, but the mother very much so. She was very unpredictable. And Suzanne learned that when she colored inside the lines, the love was more free flowing from her mother. We know that many of you listening to this can identify with this. And so the urge to stand up in the middle of whatever she is doing, even if it is a pleasant meditation where the love is flowing, to straighten out something which is not quite crooked stems from the false belief system that if my world is perfect, I will receive love. We know this message resonates with you all. And then we showed her an analogy, a metaphor, which we would like to share with you. Perhaps you are familiar with your game of monkeys in a barrel, a barrel of monkeys. Suzanne, as a child, had the little plastic barrel with the little plastic monkeys in them, and they had the crooked arms. Do you remember this? Yes. And we showed her that 
the game was such that the, you had to pull out one monkey with the crooked arm and hook another crooked arm and pull it out. And then you had to hook another one with the lower crooked arm and on, on and on you go, hooking all of the monkeys together until you've gotten the very last one out of the barrel. And the metaphor means that all of you in human form are the result of a lineage of crookedness, of monkey after monkey, great, great, great grandparents who were a bit wounded and caused the great, great grandparents to behave in a certain way who were then wounded and had to straighten the painting on the wall and then affected the monkey below them, which would be the grandparent, which affected the parent. And now here you are, the monkey in the chain, chained to the ones above you. It is your role to break the chain. And you do not lose the game by doing this, you win. It is just a game. It is not necessary to follow the monkeys who came before you, but to realize you are a winner no matter what. That come what may, whether you get up and straighten the painting or don't straighten the painting, you are so very loved. Your world is conditional. You are surrounded by people who are wounded, who are acting on the traditions of their families and will continue to give conditional love for that is the way that they were raised and they feel that they need to act in a certain way in order to receive love. What if you were to give your love freely to all, regardless of whether they are crooked or not? Would that not be a blessing? So this is simply one example of the kinds of teaching that we will be sharing through Suzanne with eyes open. And all of you may bring your challenges to us, the one worth knowing. We will not have all the answers and we will not give all the answers. And you will find evidence in some of the answers for the specific person asking the question. But we will also speak mainly in generalities for our messages are universal. And always they will go back to sharing love raising the vibration of all so that all will be able to rise in consciousness to the higher levels above the stories and find the oneness. How does this sound to all of you? You may speak. <laughs> ah, you have muted yourself using your computers, <laughs> but you know that you need not speak with the voice for your love to be felt for all of us to feel your appreciation. But if you would like to share or ask any questions at this time, we are not going anywhere, anytime. I absolutely love this. And I, I noticed that Sanaya was saying Suzanne and it wasn't impacting the Suzanne story, which was really an interesting evolution. Um, if you would allow us to explain, this goes back to a time when we, we, know that you two present here, but others do not know that Suzanne has channeled us before large groups for years now, many times in the villages, Florida with Beverly present. And the very first time that we referred to her, the channel as Suzanne, she completely dropped the link. Were you present there, Beverly? Yes, I was. I remember. <laughs> Indeed. And we will give you an example now that yeah. we but even now as Suzanne is learning more and more to embody us she did not trust us enough to share that awareness do you understand this is why every time any of you connect with higher consciousness it is practice and you embody more and more of us but at that time the mere mention of her name brought her crashing back down to the old belief system and she had to shift again and connect with us. But through the years of training, but most importantly, through integrating our messages of oneness and that higher consciousness is always here and available to all of you, she can now realize that it is possible to hold on to this higher awareness and acknowledge the 
ego self within all beings without losing awareness. We are all of this. You are both an ego and a story and the higher self at once. So yes, there is hope for all of you. <laughs> wow. I loved what you said about imperfection. Just it's it's the state of humanity. I mean, I why else would we come here when we had bliss and perfection except to experience different states of being and then to rise above those and to experience, I think, the joy that that comes from that, from awakening. Um, and you have felt this joy, if we might interrupt a bit. You can picture a little baby lying on its back, kicking and screaming. And this is how some of you are as adults, even. The baby feels discomfort and kicks and screams and wants its mother. And it screams and it gets attention and the mother comes and gives it love. And it very quickly learns that kicking and screaming brings love to it. But there are some parents like Suzanne's mother who did not like the kicking and screaming and showed her that this is not welcome. So what is a child to do? Kick and scream or not kick and scream? How to get love through this perfection? But as you were mentioning, Miss Lynette, as you grow older, you kick and scream and say, I would not come here for this pain. And you more than most people have had your share of pain and kicking and screaming and acting out. And we adore you for it. For you still find the joy and are coming to love your story and the self that inhabits it more and more. But you have done this for you have done the hard work and are willing to step beyond the story for now you accept and know that even in your imperfection, you are so very loved. Well, that's a, that's a powerful message for me. I've, I'm trying to practice radical self-acceptance and also, you know, radical other acceptance, just radical acceptance of the big one of us, because it's, for me, it's the answer to everything is to recognize that there's that, that higher level connection with every single person, every single person. And, and everyone is for the most part doing the best they can and whatever stumbles or imperfections or crooked monkey arms any of us have, it generally will lead us to growth or to a higher state. And that's, that's a gift. Indeed. And there is no accident that these three beings on, on the screen have come together for the purpose of sharing and showing that it matters not if you are the one channeling or you are the one who believes that they made many mistakes in their lives or you are the one such as Beverly who has tried to always be the good girl and always do the right thing and always help others and does a very good job of doing this. No matter which way you have tried to get love, it all comes back to the point that beyond the stories, all there is, is love. And again, we say, we adore all of you. As you would understand it, warts and all. <laughs> do either of you have a question for us at this time? Any question will do. And we do wish to come back around to a question that Suzanne was unable to answer in a recent question and answer session. We are not ready to go there yet, for we know you have other questions you can ask us, not from questions left unanswered in previous sessions, but from within your own hearts and souls, or perhaps about this path of the channeling or whatever spirit puts in your head at this time to ask during this very sacred first session of what will become, we will share it now, experiences that you will come to call the moment of truth. Suzanne will sit with other ones in a body and ask them to share a challenge. And we will be present to answer and address their questions and their challenges from a higher level. And again, we return to what we said previously, that the one asking the questions, stating an issue or a challenge will receive insights specific to them, yet general enough that all will benefit for, is it not true? Have you not seen that all challenges are universal? And that is the oneness inherent 
in being human. And this is why we call these opportunities for all of you to interact with one worth knowing through Suzanne, the channel, but you are addressing Sanaya, one worth knowing, who is, of course, Suzanne, but it is all of us, higher beings and all being all at once, one worth knowing in what we call the moment of truth, for what is truth? It is that which never changes. Any message that takes you beyond the story back to the knowing, the awareness, the acceptance, and the acknowledgement that you are this, this life force that unites all stories, that is beyond all challenges, this is truth. And yes, again, we feel your goosebumps. It is the higher energy that flows when one worth knowing touches your heart and all of you know the truth. Ah, yes, I am this power that is speaking now and touching my heart. Each person who comes to these moments of truth experiences will come at a different level of awareness of who they are. But through these experiences, whether you are the one having the moment of truth or you are all of you watching an experience and learning from these sacred interchanges, exchanges of information and energy will benefit because this is what is happening here. It is an exchange of energy information also known as consciousness. The information will come through as the words that are shared that will cause you what you understand as aha moments. But the energy within consciousness will imbue you with the higher power that is flowing through Suzanne at this time, merely as an instrument. All of you who are healers understand how it works. In your human world, you use instruments to convey energy. And this is the conveyance we are using for these specific moments of truth to transmit a transfer of higher energy that will be felt and that will be healing in whatever it, in whatever way it is needed by each instrument embodying the stories of you. Do you understand? Yes. Yeah. And it is, is it not lovely that this one can stumble upon the words now and not lose the train of energy information? It was her BS that said Sanaya must channel perfectly. Sanaya cannot be as funny as we would have always wished to be. So you <laughs> find that there is a bit more humor for we are working at breaking down the BS within Suzanne which has said that when one channels, it must be done with eyes closed in perfect deep trance and with just a bit of humor. Do you not understand that we adore humor for it raises the vibration almost as much as gratitude? We are so grateful for all of you giving us attention so that we may give you the gift of our love. Yes, through humor, Yes, through the goosebumps. Yes, through the transmission of energy. But yes, just by allowing us to share the message that we, the one, are always present, always accessible to all of you. You will enjoy these moments of truth. We will ensure it through the humor and through the teaching, bringing to us exactly the right people, the right stories, choosing them, not randomly, but knowing at the higher level who has, who is going to elicit the teaching that those who will listen to it need at that time. You will see it will be wondrous and we are most excited. It is about time she got out of the way, don't you think so? <laughs> Ms. Lovely. You have sat very quietly and we know you do have a question. Would you like to ask it now? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm just smiling because, Sanaya, you're answering my questions. And, um, and this is I'm the thinking how, how silly I was that when in the beginning I thought, uh, well, well how, how will we know who should 
ask a question and Suzanne, what if this and what if this and what if this? And I realize you have it all orchestrated and it's unfolding perfectly and I have to get out of the way and and let it flow. So um, I've, I've just been smiling and more and more as, as you've answered this question and this question already. Exactly. Yeah. And this is what we were interrupting for. That was a bit of Suzanne needing to orchestrate things. And more and more as we go along, she will learn to step back even more fully. But we wished to show by example here in your statement that you received the evidence you wanted, you needed to show that, yes, we do know what is in your heart and mind. It is such a pleasure knowing all of you. We cannot not know you. The statement that we know every hair on your head, we speaking as the one, is quite true. For your hair is our hair. It is all the projection of the one. And so all of the attention you give to this hair being out of place and all of that is just the human <laughs> ego thing. This one has been having a bad hair day for not over a month now and quite a lesson it is. She did have a chance yesterday to meet with such a dear friend, the stepmother of the one you would understand as Wolf. Her name is Beth Pasakarnes. They had a moment to meet with her in person for the first time since she has been undergoing treatments for a cancer which has affected her blood. It is a very aggressive form. And this one, Beth, is such an example for all others around her, refusing to accept statistics, knowing that she has a diagnosis, accepting that, but keeping a mantra that she is strong, that her body is in balance, going for two to four mile walks every day, despite aggressive chemotherapy treatments, and now facing a very aggressive treatment of a bone marrow transplant. The statistics are not what you would understand as good, but she is paying no attention to the statistics. The reason we bring her up now is that there they sat in the recreational vehicle belonging to Suzanne and Ty, meeting for the first time, hugging one of those heartfelt hugs that you would all understand as each averted the breath so as not to cause further harm to a body that is already weakened. weakened. However, that hug transmitted much more than any words could say. And there sat Beth with her knitted cap on her head to hide the fact that she no longer has any hair. And does this not bring to awareness the lesson of the importance humans give to their appearance? the importance they give to the hair being out of place and not looking as good as you would like. And Beth did admit that she has remained strong and has not gone into a depression, except for a few moments, just a few days ago, when she looked in the mirror after having been bald for over a month now and went into a fit of crying, saying, I have no hair. For you see, you are in a body and you have a story. And our message is, it is okay to honor the story. It would be inhuman to not feel sadness in response to changes in the story. But through your thoughts, through a mantra that empowers you, as this one known as Beth has learned to do through the teachings that you can rise above the story and it matters not if you have hair or do not have hair. It matters not if you have done as many humans think and sinned or not sinned. We use this word only to show human thinking. We do not use these words normally. We call these human errors made through trial. Trial and error Errors are mistakes, choices made that have taken you out of alignment with this. This higher energy with which we bathe you now, we know you can feel it when you go to the heart. Think and hold that word that we have just used that caused the energy to constrict tightly. Sin, 
this is a human word. What if you were to change your words from sickness and cancer to a visitor in the body? From illness to I am returning to balance, such as Beth is demonstrating. From sin to human trial that ended up being a mistake and change the vibration of the life force flowing through your body by being willing to look at what is causing that discomfort. You all felt it when we said the word. What other words cause you discomfort? What images such as a crooked painting on the wall cause you discomfort? Are you willing to color outside the lines? Step outside the story and come to know yourself as one worth knowing. This would be your moment of truth. And that is our goal with these sessions. We hope you would join us as we conduct them this one has lined up sessions already with those who are willing to bear their stories, to reveal the soul, to share their stories so that they may find more of the light within already and let it radiate out more. Simply by hearing and watching these stories, all of you have the opportunity to reveal your own light, to shine your own light more brightly. This morning, as we were concluding the meditation with Suzanne with eyes open, practicing allowing us to speak and allowing her to stumble and allow in more humor, we said to her, pull a tarot card. You will pull the perfect one. This is a game we have played with her. For quite a while now, she is not a tarot reader. She would not look good with a turban on her head and a little table with a tablecloth spread out before her. But one card pulled with divine timing can carry quite a message for any of you. And in this case, with total trust that we are one, we even guided her as to how many times to shuffle, only one. And she has a normal way of pulling cards. When the deck divides just a bit, she knows that is the one. But we even caused her to break out of this mold this time and not do it that way. Do you see how we are causing her to stretch? And it is in stretching. If you stretch a rubber band enough, does it not grow a bit larger? We will never stretch any of you to the point where you will break. Just enough that you will grow. And so we caused her to change her routine and said, stop there and pull that one. And this is the card that she pulled. It is the sun. And it is the perfect card. For we were speaking previously about shining your light. All of you and us are connected by the one light of spirit. And spirit radiates outward like the rays of this sun. And once again, you have the goosebumps and they are felt by Suzanne. As the rays radiate outwards, you appear to be separate from this one light, but this is only appearance. This is why sages have said that the world is an illusion. It is very real, but it appears separate from the one truth. The moment of truth is when you come to see, yes, I am an individual ray of light. State your name. I, this name, this body, am a direct projection of the one light, spirit of God. But whilst I pay attention only to the story, to the ray, I lose awareness that the central sun, the main light, is always here within me. And thus it is hard for the human to say, I am 
God. For that would be silly, would it not? Even we projecting now into awareness cannot encapsulate the fullness of all of the light. So we will not be able to solve all of your mysteries. We will not be able to give you the answers to all of your questions. We will not give you new scientific equations. Yes, we have called it playing stump the chump in one of the very first channeling sessions that Suzanne did. So there will not be answers to all questions for two reasons. Number one, for even we as voices for the one do not have all of the answers for answers are unfolding as we speak, literally. And two, for if we were to provide all of the answers, what would be the point in incarnating into a story? For are you not finding great joy as you solve your own mysteries? Therefore, some of those who come to Suzanne to speak to the one known as Sanaya for these moments of truth, will not always get the answer they desire, for we are not exactly a genie in a bottle, although we do love getting robbed. <laughs> <laughs> you will receive answers that help all, this we have said before, and we do look forward to this new part of the journey. Did you all not recognize the confluence of ones in magical ways a few weeks ago? with 111,111 subscribers now well past that number on your YouTube channel with 11,000 followers on your Instagram. These 11s all coming together at the same time. And if you are to look up 111111, any one in succession is an indication of new beginnings. And you all wondered, what is the new beginning? This is it, dear ones. A new level of channeling to take you all to the awareness. All is one. Do you see? And it is a message that will come out in myriad ways. With a bit of fun with some tears, but always, if you are willing to be open with growth. And now, before we depart, but always accessible, we would like to address this question that came up in a recent question and answer session between the three of you. The question was not answered, for it so brought Suzanne back down to her BS that she was unable to access us. It was not that we did not have an answer. It was not that we could not answer, but in a way we could not answer through her for her belief system blocked access to this energy information. The question, Miss Beverly, we will give you a chance to restate it so that I'll hear it again for you did receive an Email, we understand, from someone who was quite disappointed that Suzanne did not answer the question. We will put all of the blame on her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the question uh, originally asked was, is there an epidemic of adult children sort of turning their back on their parents, rejecting their parents, not having anything to do with their parents? This is quite a good question. And now we understand, excuse us, Suzanne understands why we asked you to restate it. For Suzanne had forgotten this use of the word epidemic. And now that you have put it out there, that word has not quite the same effect as sin, but it is equally a word that carries a vibration that will bring you all to fear and panic. You have just been through a two-year-long 
period of dealing with what was an epidemic, not only of physical proportions, but mental and emotional proportions, your COVID-19. And so the way this question was worded, is there an epidemic, is not true. It is not an epidemic. It is not spreading the fact that more and more children are not engaging in conversation, con maintaining contact with their parents. Yes, there are more than in the past, but this can be turned around. And we bring up the COVID-19 for a reason. The separation and the pain, the social isolation caused by your COVID-19 reactions, caused by the fear, did cause much instability in family units, did not allow all of you to interact personally in the most effective ways. You relied upon social media, and this is most definitely like an anchor dragging you all down. For social media and your emails do not allow for the true exchange of feelings which carry emotions, which carry information. Feelings can drag you down quickly and can be misinterpreted. Is it not true that many times you have received an email or a text and interpreted this in one way through your own filters when this was not at all the way that the sender meant it to be received. They sent it with humor. You received it in pain for it went through your filters. This is why you are seeing more disagreements between families. Look at how long this separation has taken place. This one did not answer the question for they are dealing with this problem, this challenge, in their own family, there has been a separation of one who is very close and very loved, but this has been going on for nine years without contact. This was before social media was an influence. This is the direct result of misunderstandings of between the two who are not communicating. This is a direct result of hurt feelings. Please understand, that when there is no connection at the surface level, there is disconnection of feelings underneath. There is pain. And the one who is not reaching out, despite the efforts, most likely a child not reaching out to parents is because they are in pain and they have blocked out the very thing they want most of all, the love from their parents believing that their parents cannot give it to them. This is not true. And in many cases, the parents are not even aware of how they have caused the pain for it has gone through the filters of the other one. You cannot always be aware of what filters another has through their own restric restricted channels. That is their body, their story. Would they be able to express the one who is silent and separating themselves? Would they be able to express their true feelings? You would be shocked. You would see misunderstanding. You would suddenly say, that is why you are not communicating with me? Yes, well, in many cases, there is awareness of what caused the initial challenge, but there are layers and layers and layers of filters at work here. If returning to our social media issue, if you look at a separation that has only been going on for a couple of years, this isolation is very much due to the results that you are seeing in your young people of depending on instant love, instant feedback that you get from your social media. It is a twisted form of love. They have shut themselves off and are not aware of the benefit of in-person interactions when one can radiate their true feelings that cannot be missed. This is why you three who have experienced the intimate presence and the exchange of love personally between each other, feel these goosebumps that you are feeling in this moment now. You know that the love is real. You feel it in the body. 
this is missed through emails, through texts, through written interaction, through your social media. And so how to overcome this? It is very, very challenging when you try to change another. Remember this phrase, I want you to love me as I am. This is what all of you are crying out at all times. And yet what does the human being do? It tries to change another, to conform to your own desires so that you will be loved. A parent in most cases knows unconditional love. They love their child no matter what, for they know you are a part of me. This is why we love you so very much. We know you are a part of us. We know that all humans and all beings everywhere cannot be separated by physical separation. At the deepest levels, we are one and you are so worth knowing. But when you forget this, and most especially when there is a challenge such as separation between family members, there is great pain. You cannot change another. Do not try. This is counterproductive. The best guidance we can give you is to give another what they want to love them as they are. And in this moment, if they are not communicating with you, then that is how they are. Love even that person and you will have let down your defenses. You will have made yourself vulnerable. And what does this mean? Open to any energy coming at you and your loved one will be radiating energy at you that may cause pain in you and you will take that in a certain way put down your defenses when there are defenses what are you defending a story who are you beyond the story this simply love flowing does this mean your loved one will come running back to you if you accept that they have shunned you? Miracles have been known to happen. What if you simply love them as they are? Know that they are on their path now and they are hurting. What do you do to one who is hurting? Whether or not you know the reasons, it is going through their filters. And the only way to break down barriers is with love. But do not send love to get something, to get their love in response. Send them love for they are hurting. For whatever reason, it may have nothing at all to do with you. Or it may in their minds, in their heads, not their heart have everything to do with you. It matters not. Speak only heart to heart, soul to soul. I love you with all my heart. I accept you as you are. At the soul level, I am so grateful that you know we love each other for all eternity. When you can live from this space, you will find peace and you will be healing them more than you know. Each case is different for each of you. Our individual rays here on your own journeys. And trust us, we are doing our best to heal these rifts as well. But it begins with each one of you coming to see the connections and appreciate them. How do you like them apples? I like those apples a lot. We always say to Suzanne, 
an apple for the teacher. Usually when there is a teacher present, and Beverly, we know that you have been a teacher at times, but all of you are teachers. All of you are God in expression. The arms and legs and voice, lips, hand of God. We hope that through these moments of truth, all of you will be an even more open, brighter, greater expression of the one light of love. And we know that you do not have any more questions at this time. We are most grateful for the two of you, beautiful instruments of God, for being present with us here for this inaugural session of the open-eyed channel, as you may call Suzanne now, and kid her mercilessly. But we will tell all of you that we hope that she has served as a model for all of you for getting beyond your story, for getting over yourself. Do not take yourself so seriously. She will show you now this ridiculous haircut. You see, she still focuses upon it, but can laugh at it now grateful to even have hair. When you can see what you feel are your faults and ask the one, how can I turn this into a growth opportunity? You will grow. She has felt the discomfort for years now. And it has been us while she has channeling, saying there is an even better way to channel us. You need not do it the way you thought. What are all of you doing a certain way for it has made you feel safe? We would like to tell you that the picture on the wall is still crooked. This is growth. She did not pop out of the chair and have to change it. For after years of communing with us, she knows what we want all of you to know. And it is why we end every message of ours that we give you on a daily basis with these special words. You are so very loved. Whether or not you color inside the lines or well outside the lines. And do you not know some people who color so far outside the lines you step back and say, oh my God. And we say, yes. Oh my God, it's you. Do your best to do no harm. That is what we ask of you as you make your mistakes. And you will. You will stumble and fall, all of you. For that is how you grow. Be willing to stretch yourselves, knowing now more than ever how loved you are, how guided you are. Ask to know this and accept it in your heart and we will be with you every step of the journey. We thank the three of you for your presence here with us today. We are not going anywhere. We are looking forward to these moments of the truth with all of you. Moments of truth to bring you back to the known. And we thank you. I have a teacher who gave me some great guidance yesterday. A, a teacher in human form. And I reached out to him to tell him I finally accepted this open-eyed channeling awareness. And I told him the method I was using to go higher and hold it. And he said, it's perfect. But I had told him that I was going to come back down by making a mood or squeezing my finger or coming back into the body more. And his advice was, no, don't do that. Just come back down naturally. I know that if I tried to ground myself now, I'd completely snap out of this, but I haven't right now. You can tell I'm, I'm, a, I'm back in the story. 
I mean, Suzanne is now talking to you and I can tell there's such a difference, but I'm still extremely spacey. I would not want to go drive my car right now. Don't operate heavy machinery, right? <laughs> but uh, he advised, you'll come back down normally. And that's great advice for all of us, right? Why snap back into the story fully? So I'm excited about this, huh? I'm excited wow. about it. Wow. So we weren't kidding everybody. This was live. We didn't know how this was going to go. Uh, no, but we didn't. So I did know. I knew they were going to channel. I knew they were going to explain it, but I didn't know how we were supposed to do it. Right. So they just said, start recording. And I know we'll share this whole recording on YouTube, right? Yeah. And, and they were perfect. They introduced what the moments of truth are. And I have my first one scheduled this afternoon. Oh, good. good. And another one on Sunday said, really, you want to do that Christmas Eve? And why not? Right? Yeah. We'll do hello. Yeah. And so okay. Beth uh, found me a couple of people with challenges that I don't know about. And they know who Sanaya is. And so they're going to come on and they're going to share their challenge and we're going to record it and probably put two or three of those sessions together and share them publicly so that everybody learns. What do you think girls? Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. In the beginning, I thought this was our idea. <laughs> <laughs> Silly of me. Oh, that is funny because I knew it wasn't our idea. <laughs> You mean this wait the whole moment moment of truth thing or this just getting together today? No, no, in the in the beginning, the moments of truth thing. I I mean I know it's inspired, but you know, I thought we were oh. we were working out the details or whatever, and now I realize, you know, that it's all it's all worked out. <laughs> it's all well, and, and they're saying right now that you know we we in the human form do need to work out the details and we had to work out, well, how are we going to get the right person to email me in the net? You need right. to do this. But that's, you know, that's part of the team effort, but absolutely the whole thing was inspired by spirit. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, cool. I love the answer um, about the estrangement issue. And I, you know, I heard a lot of, because we have that in my family as well. And, and I heard a lot of wisdom there and also, you know, the key to basically any relationship, to healing any relationship is is just be love, be love. Set aside this story and extend extend love, extend my prayers without expectation to that other. That That is really, that's such a gift. It is. You, you remind me of that, that story I've told in many workshops. Uh, Ty and I don't argue a whole lot, but there was one time where we were just really butting heads and I knew that neither one of us was going to see each other's point of view. It just was not going to happen. And I walked away and I went into the laundry room, I remember, and I just said, I don't know what to do about this. What do I do? And see, that was the point. Until that point, I didn't ask. And this booming voice said, just love him. It was a duh moment. And I went back out and see with all my defenses and all my, why can't you see my point of view and, and, and I'm right and you're wrong. With all of that gone, I walked up to him and I said, sweetheart, I love you so much. Hmm. And the whole thing just dissolved. That's it. It is so simple. And, and But some people hearing this right now will say, yes, but I'm right or they're wrong or they did this and not, they did that. That's the story, isn't it? And that's what these moments of truth are going to help us see over and over and over and over and over again. And there's your favorite Rumi quote to use as a mantra, out beyond fields out. of wrongdoing and right doing, or is it out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing? No, no, right. It's field. I will yeah. meet you there. Yeah. So I hope you all will meet us back here. We'll call these moments of truth recording. Okay. And... I'm just so excited. I'm waking up in the morning just saying, wow, new beginnings, a whole new aspect of the journey. And won't it be interesting to see who ends up having their moment of truth with Sanaya? Yay. It could be you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. And thank you, everybody. We'll see you around.